Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and yes, I'm wearing my Cowboys hat because the Cowboys are actually tied for first place, and I'm kind of surprised by that because, you know, I'm a Cowboys fan. I've been a Cowboys fan since, well, I guess 1969, 1970. It was my dad's favorite team. It was my favorite team, you know, America's team. Who didn't love the Cowboys, uh, at least back then, and I'm still a Cowboys fan. Had some tough times, but, you know, there it is. But... Before I go on to my main topic, I also want to kind of explain, because sometimes I feel like I'm yelling at the camera, <laughs> the video camera, and it's because I'm using this Logitech uh, 310 camera, which is a wonderful webcam, but every once in a while when I start these videos, this box comes up and says, it can't hear me speaking, and I'm thinking, what, you can't hear me speaking? I mean, I'm speaking direct. I know how to project. I was a former singer. I was a trained singer, so I know how to project but it can't hear it. So then when I come out and I go louder, then it goes on and everything is fine. So in case you've ever wondered or if I sound like I'm yelling at the camera, that's why I do it. So getting on with the topic. You know, last week I put up a video and I called it Take Care of Yourself First. And that's supposed to be my mantra for how, you know, I really want to take care of myself first. Yep, yeah, see, there's me because I had an itch. So I took care of myself first. <laughs> anyway, um... So I had talked about, you know, some uh, problems I've been having uh, adjusting my numbers with diabetes and how I needed to try to take care of myself. So what happens? Last Friday, I, you know, went to a meeting of my consultants group. So first thing I did is I stopped at McDonald's and I got a sandwich, a breakfast sandwich in the morning. And I had checked glucose and, you know, it had been fine. So I stopped and I, to get something to eat and I get the sandwich and I get a soda and I go to my meeting. And then after the meeting, I spent some time talking with a young guy locally who, he's a writer, he's a freelance writer, and he was, you know, wanted to talk about business, he wants to kind of do that for his life. And so we went to this other place where I tried something, <laughs> oh Lord, um, it, it, it's one of those vegan places, and I'm not necessarily a vegan kind of guy, I'm just not, but I thought they would have fruit juice, which they kind of did. By that, I mean the one that I end up deciding to try, said it had apple, carrots, beets, lemon, and ginger. All this stuff was mixed in. And I said, how come I can't just have straight up apple juice? And the guy said, because we make all of our stuff fresh, and it takes 10 apples to make one glass of apple juice. I, I, I'd never heard of such a thing. But, you know, this is what they tried. So I actually bought this thing, and it was this thick purple stuff that came out. And he prefaced his earlier thing by saying, Everything we have here, he said, most of our juices taste more like the fruit than anything else. This one didn't do it. Uh, and I asked, do you have equal? He says, we have stevia. And I said, of course you do. <laughs> because, you know, uh, all the stuff out there about aspartame, eh, what are you going to do? Anyway, I had a little bit of that. I put three stevias in this little glass, trying to make it palatable. That didn't work. But still, I at least had that little bit. So anyway... I come home from meeting him, and I actually actually had to go buy some other stuff first. And so I come back home, and I'm tired because I tend to go to bed late. In this case, I went to bed on time, but I couldn't get to sleep because it was earlier than I'm used to going to bed. And I had to be up at 7.10 in the morning. So I was tired, and I was really, really tired, really, really tired. And... You know, I, I've started to notice that when I get really, really tired, maybe that's a bad sign. And I'll tell you why. Because I said, you know what, let me go and lay down here and take a nap. So I laid down and I took a nap. And I ended up sleeping about you know, almost close to an hour and a half. And when I woke up, I'm not necessarily feeling great. I feel rested, but I don't necessarily feel great. So I come to the computer, you know, sitting right here. And in about five minutes, I start feeling really, really shaky. And I'm like, well, what's the deal with this? So I checked my glucose, and it was at 39. <laughs> 39. Let's just say that that is uber dangerous. That is just scary. I've never had a 39 before. I had a 44 once, which was really scary uh, a couple of years ago. Heck, actually, it may have been even last summer. But uh, 39, and I was going down. Now... The best thing about it is that I was home. I was not in the hotel room. I wasn't anywhere else. And I had bought some hard candies just in case this happened. So I went, I got some of these hard candies, and I was able to eat some of these hard candies. And then I was able to heat something up. 
really quick to eat it to try to get me to a place where I can actually make lunch. That, that may sound weird, but in a weird way, that's kind of what a diabetic has to do sometimes. You know, I have gained immeasurable control over my high numbers ever since I started using the MyFitnessPal app. And my Fitbit here that I, I showed, yes, and it's now the red one. Last time it was the blue one, but I had ordered a red one because red is my color. And I, I've gotten control over those high numbers. I've now brought that down almost 100 points by average. However, what happens now is that I have these periods where I have these drastic lows. And so you have to do whatever you can to build that back up so that you can get back to at least a semblance of normalcy so that you can then do something else. And, you know, you can't sit there and cook a full meal when you need to boost your glucose or your sugar level back up to a place. So I had to eat something really quick. And luckily at home, I had stuff. And you don't always have stuff when you're out. But, you know, I wanted to do this because there are these people who, when you're diabetic, they tend to think they know more about it than you do. Uh, people will tell you, well, maybe you shouldn't eat that dessert, or maybe you shouldn't eat that pasta, or maybe you shouldn't eat this thing over here. You know, they, they're very knowledgeable about that, but they have no real clue. And truthfully, I will tell you the truth. Until I got to my fitness pal thing, I don't think I really had a clue because I would try to limit the number of carbs. And I would say, you know what, I need to load myself up on protein. And what this thing has shown me is that it's got to be a mix between some protein and some carbs. Because last week, uh, well, yeah, before I had this crash on Friday, I had a couple of numbers in the 60s, and I had eaten, but I had only eaten protein. I hadn't eaten any kind of carb whatsoever. So it starts to tell you that, you know, protein by itself isn't enough to take care of this. And this is one of the problems with diabetes is always this management between your medication and how you're eating and when you're eating and what you're eating. And it, it's, it's, it's really not an easy thing. And it brings on stuff. For instance, when my numbers were high, I had this risk of these aneurysms in my eye uh, because it was eye problems back in 1997, which led me to go to a doctor. Okay, my wife led me to go to the doctor, but still, um, where it was diagnosed, you know, I was diagnosed as diabetic, so it was 17 years ago. Um, but, you know, I had this thing because the numbers were too high. And the thing is, when numbers are relatively high, and, you know, mine were in the mid 200s. I didn't really feel anything different, but of course, it does take a toll on your body. When my numbers were higher sometimes, I would feel a little logy and, you know, whatever. But it was a totally different feeling than when the numbers are low. When the numbers are low, they're shaky. You are shaky, your head hurts, and it brings on other things. It can bring on depression. You get really depressed. A lot of times when it's really high, you, you start getting depressed. You can get surly and moody and, and snap at people. Um, that can happen. Um, <laughs> the depression, it, it, it's, it's a miserable thing. Um, and there's not a lot you can do with it. And, and I really chafe when I get people who aren't diabetic who will say, oh, you know what? You can eliminate diabetes by just doing this and just doing this. No, you can't. You cannot. Let me, let me just say this to all you people who think you can. You cannot eliminate diabetes like that. It is possible, it turns out, if you qualify for the, the gastric bypass surgery, some of those people have actually been able to eliminate diabetes. Uh, but it's not really eliminating diabetes as much as when you get to gastric bypass surgery, you actually have to follow this regimen. You can only eat so much, but you have to do it multiple times. Uh, and you have to. It's a medical thing. Uh, and, and that actually starts to regulate everything. Well, that's different than just coming out and saying it cures diabetes. No, it, it forces you into changing how you eat and how you manage it. So it's not quite the same thing as totally eliminating, you know, diabetes. You can't take a pill to eliminate it. You know what? See this? This is my insulin. I take two shots a day of that. And I got this stuff here. It's called metformin. And I take two of these... Big old pills, <laughs> if you can see that. I take two of these every every day. 
And this is actually a medication that's working because the doctor I had previously, he had me on this other thing that never seemed to be working. And I said, I don't think this stuff's working. And then when I got this other doctor, she looked and said, well, I think we need to put you on this. And this stuff works. Uh, it helps to control it. I found that out when I was in San Diego. I was putting on a lot of steps a day. I mean, just, just walking tons. It, actually, in Orlando also, but I ran out of that medication. I had insulin, but I ran out of that medication. And the numbers went higher. You know, it, it's proof that I actually do need both. Um, but I also then, you know, like I said, I started having these lows. And since, you know, I started using this other thing, I've been able to drop how much medication, how much insulin I take. I started to take the pills. But, you know, I, I'm doing this and I'm saying this because, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are diabetic. I mean, it's one of the fastest growing things in the world. And there's a lot of people who think that it's all our fault because of what we ate and how we ate and did all this other kind of stuff. You know what? I think I was the 17th or 18th person in my family on my dad's side who ended up with diabetes. And, you know, it just, there was a family history there. We're predisposed toward it. Um, are there things I could have done to maybe delay it? Yeah, but it was never going to stop it. It was coming. That's just how it is. You know, there's this thing where people think that you can just blame, you know, people for diabetes or whatever. You can blame whatever. Yeah, there are those times where there's some people who are just overeating like crazy. And, you know, you will have that problem. But you know what? It turns out not all heavy people have diabetes. True. I don't have high blood pressure. <laughs> of all the weird things, my blood pressure is perfect. It always has been. Uh, so, you know, it's not always about weight. It's about a lot of other things. And I, I'm just putting this out there because for the diabetics, I want you to know, you know what? You're not alone. You know you're not alone. But the new people don't. And so I'm saying that for the new people. Saying that for people who are having problems, you know what? You really can find ways to at least gain some kind of control. I did it by using my fitness pal and I follow that thing along because it helps me to count the calories. You know, putting it all there, I'm a numbers kind of guy and I'm not doing it on my own. I'm not guessing anymore. And now I can pretty much eat anything I want to as long as I stay under my certain number of calories per day. And since my fitness uh, Fitbit adds calories based on how many steps I get a day and how I get those steps, it just opens up a whole new world. It's a wonderful thing. But the lows are scary. I'm just saying that right now. The lows are scary. And I've got to figure that part out. And I have to tell myself, you know what? When you're that sleepy, maybe you should eat something first before you go take that nap. Go ahead and take the nap. But, you know, it, it really is a freaky thing. When you wake up crashing, and that happened to me uh, when I was in Memphis. I woke up crashing. And then I was in the hotel. I couldn't get to anything for a long time. It really took me a while. Here, luckily, I was able to just pretty much lay my hand on something. So, you know what? Right now, I've got these cough drops. No real sugar, but each one is 10 calories. It's, it would be something to help. So, I'm just putting it out there because I just thought it was time to really talk more about diabetes. I had another video talking about it a long time ago, I think. And I mentioned it in some other stuff. I mentioned it when I first talk, started talking about my fitness pal. And, you know, it's just kind of a follow-up thing. It's this scary. It really is a scary thing. Um, I wouldn't wish this upon a lot of people. And I say that that way because, you know, there's those people who hear about something, they say, I wouldn't wish it upon that upon my worst enemy. Well, I don't have a worst enemy, so I don't know. But if I did, I think I wouldn't be overly depressed. And I know you're not supposed to think that way, but let's be truthful. You know, the people we really hate, do we really care? I don't. But I don't really hate anyone. So there you go. I did in my past, but we won't go there. So anyway, this is all I had to say about it. Uh, I'm Mitch Mitchell. And let me know if you're diabetic, if you have issues. And if you have family members, you know, there's a lot of things I know. Like I said, I've been diabetic for 17 years. I've read a ton and I know how to help bring it down. Uh, now I've got to control when I get those lows, how to stop getting those lows because that's just miserable. So y'all take care. Have a great, let's, let's see, this is still Monday night. Have a great Tuesday. Bye.